Let's talk about antibiotics in dentistry. Antibiotics are extremely overused in veterinary dentistry. And I know so many clinics where they routinely prescribe antibiotics after dental extractions. And I used to do that too, because that's the way they did in my clinic when I started. Five days of clindamycin after every extraction. But happily, I found out it was not necessary at all at all and i have not been using antibiotics for about eight years now I'm, i can maybe i've said maybe used it for five six cases that's it for eight years so you don't really need it so why do some vets still use it i think most of it is based on fear they're afraid that it may get infected there are some misinformation out there You may want to be on the safe side, so you want to stay safe. It's like they say, well, better give some antibiotics so we don't get an infection. And maybe it's the boss's orders. They do it at the clinic. That's the way we've always done it, and we never had any infections, so we keep doing it. So maybe some misinformation too. So a reason for considering antibiotics in general is to prevent surgical side infections. So... In our case, infections in the mouth after extractions. And these, I think I've seen one case in 10 years of a surgical side infection. It's extremely rare. And we want to prevent distant infections. So we all know that the bacteria from the mouth goes into the bloodstream and it can go to the liver, to the heart and to the kidneys and cause problems. However, It's not really a job for the antibiotics to take care of this. This is your own body's immune system and it's perfectly capable of dealing with these bacteria in the bloodstream. So when you clean the teeth or chew on food for that sake, (laughs) then after you do that, you have a 20 minute period where there's bacteria in the bloodstream. And after those 20 minutes, your immune system has cleared that infection. So in our patients, in veterinary dentistry, the only times you should consider using systemic antibiotics is for immunocompromised patients. So a truly immunocompromised patient. I'm not talking about the old 15, 16 year old dog that's otherwise perfectly healthy, that's not immunocompromised. And age is not a disease. Age does not prone to infection. So, But if you have a, a patient that you keep under a very high dose of corticosteroids for something else, or a cancer patient or a leukemia patient, something like that, then you may have an immunocompromised patient. If our patients had prosthetic valve implants, then we would need antibiotic for that. But in our case, mostly it's mitral valve disease, and that does not need antibiotics. Also in humans, transplanted hearts and the prosthetic valves. Those are the reasons why you want to protect the heart. In our patients, the more the higher risk of catching bacteria is if you have a subaortic stenosis. So mitral valve disease, the murmur we hear, it's not a reason for giving antibiotics. But if you are very sure you have a stenosis of the aorta, you may want to consider uh, giving a single dose of, of antibiotic before treatment. If you have an open jaw fracture, then we also recommend doing a single dose of antibiotic preoperatively. So the correct use of antibiotics, if you need it, and those are the only reasons I just listed when you need it, that's preoperatively, you give one injection of one to two milligrams per kilo of ampicillin, 30 minutes prior to surgery, and then every two hours while you are in surgery. If you don't have that, but you want to give something orally, then choose amoxicillin, clavulanic acid, or clindamycin and give it one hour prior to surgery. 
and that's all you need. You don't need anything post-op, okay? So giving, sending the patient home with any antibiotic in the tablet form post-operatively is not necessary. I want to stress that it's not necessary. What you can do post-op is you give the owner some chlorhexidine gel or rinse to use twice daily. That's perfect to do that. The, so the indications and that are the, the things that are not an indication for antibiotic use is age, as we said, mitral valve disease. If you have kidney, liver disease, but it's well regula- regulated, you don't need antibiotics. If you have a splenectomy before and it has already healed, then you don't need antibiotics. If you have any implants, so after TPLO or TTA or artificial hip implants, you don't need antibiotics for that. Periodontitis is the biggest disease that we are treating and is often the number one reason why vets want to give antibiotics because it looks horrendous in this mouth. There's bleeding, there's pus coming out, there's infection, all this stuff. But remember, we know that periodontitis, the treatment is surgical, it's not medical. So the bacteria are sitting, they are present in a biofilm on the teeth and we need to scrape that biofilm off. We cannot treat it with medication. And the bacteria that's embedded in biofilm, they need 250 to 1000 times the normal dose of antibiotics to be killed. But aside from that, there are no blood vessels going into the biofilm. So it's not really possible for systemic antibiotic to kill these bacteria. That's why we don't need to use them. So let's do a thought experiment. If you are trying to prescribe medication to treat periodontitis, you would need to prescribe 100 packages twice of tablets twice daily for five days. Imagine yourself telling a client that. It's crazy, right? So not needed at all. What you can do and what I recommend to do is to use antiseptics for chronic periodontitis cases and after surgery. So you send the patient home, not with any pills, but with this, a 0.06 to 0.12% chlorhexidine rinse or gel to use it twice daily. And I just tell the owner, just put something on the finger and smear it underneath the upper lip and it will, it will, um, it will, um, it will go in the mouth where it needs to go. So it, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, to touch the surgical site. Just get it somewhere in the mouth and it will, it will disinfect the whole mouth. The rinse should be more effective than a gel. However, I like this Stomodina one because it has a meat flavor. So it's better for some dogs and some cats. But for cats, there's something called zinc ascorbate. And zinc ascorbate has also uh, antimicrobial properties. So, and that is well tolerated by cats. And this is called MaxiGuard, the blue bottle here. This, if you can get it, I'm not sure we can get it in Denmark, but if you can get it in your country, this should be well, very well accepted by cats. Something new that has come to the market is the hypochloric acid products. And in Denmark, it's called Eficlean, but it tastes like um, chlorine. Uh, it's a very vague, uh, very subtle taste of chlorine, but, uh, but most animals, they, they um, accept it. And it's cheaper in the long run than chlorhexidine. So these are the things you should use when sending page home, patients home after surgery, surgery, not pills. There are, however, one type of medication that is indicated If you have a chronic periodontitis patient and you do everything you can, you clean it every four to six months 
the owners do some home care, but you are still not able to control the disease and it still wants to progress. Then there are lots of studies showing that a sub antimicrobial dose of doxycycline can be used every day for the rest of the dog's life. And a sub antimicrobial dose, 2 mg per kilo, is not, uh, you don't use it to kill bacteria. You use it because it down regulates the activity of the metalloproteinases, which are key destructive enzymes in periodontal disease. So you are hindering the destruction of the periodontal tissues with this medication. And being sub entry microbial, it does not cause resistance. So giving this, even though it's doxycycline, when you give it in this low dose, you do not cause any resistance problems. So this is something you can consider if you have a very severe case that you cannot really manage. So this was a very short presentation because I hope you learned that antibiotics in veterinary dentistry is very, very rarely needed. So that's it.